Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, then hi, I'm Anusha. I'm originally from India. I'm currently a CT2, that is co-trainee year two in the specialty psychiatry here in London. So today's video is quite an interesting one. I did put out a poll on my Instagram stories asking if you guys be interested to know about my one year experience of being a psychiatry co-trainee and of working on adult inpatient ward. I was surprised how many of you guys wanted to know about my experience and what my thoughts were and what my reflections are and everything. So I thought I'll compile all of my one year long emotions in one video. Starting off, before I started my co-training last year in February 2020, I had no prior psychiatry experience. I did my medical school from India and during our one year rotatory internship, we have only a 15 day slot for our psychiatry rotation. And then we have a choice where we can pick another rotation, which is a 15 day period again. So people take up radiology, dermatology. So I chose psychiatry again. Other than those 30 days I had no prior experience of working in psychiatry even when I started working in NHS as a non-trainee in Southern University Hospital I was working in ortho Jerry so I did not work in psychiatry yet again the only kind of experience that I had in psychiatry was the one week long shadowing that I did prior to starting my co-training job here in London fortunately during that one week period I fell sick and I couldn't attend the entire one week so again no psychiatry experience there so I was just like one of you guys before I started my co-training here. I was very anxious, very worried because I knew the mental health services completely worked differently to a general hospital. I did not know the lingo. I did not know the layers of care that were there. I did not know the full form of a lot of abbreviations that is used on a day-to-day -day basis at work. I do not know how the on calls are, what is expected of me. I do not know the night shifts. I do not know what are the cases you see. So yeah, I was literally like kind of pushed off the deep end when i started my co-training in psychiatry but i did have one year experience of working as a non-trainee in nhs so i kind of knew how the system works having said that mental health services work completely differently to general hospital so the first few weeks i was pretty anxious i was very worried but i made sure that i let everybody know whoever i came in contact with from the staff that i haven't worked in psychiatry prior to this this is my first job in psychiatry please be a little patient with me but i do learn things very quickly so if you explain it to me once i'm not gonna come back to you and ask you the same question again a lot of times people forget that i'm not from uk i've only been in the country for two years i'm still figuring out things and sometimes people do say things a little harshly i try not to take it to heart and let it go but then few things do stay with you but then that's part and parcel of life you're not always going to meet kind people and that's okay so yeah so that was my whole mindset before i started my psychiatry co-training last year in february all right so i'm going to give a quick overview of what is expected of a psychiatry co-trainee. I'm going to keep drawing a little comparisons with India because that's where I'm from and I know a lot of my subscriber base is from India. We have co-training which is for three years in psychiatry and just the way you have your post-graduation PG in India which is for three years. But in India after three years of PG you're called a consultant. You're not expected to do any higher specialty training or like in India it's called super specialty but here you have to do a specialty training after your three years of course psychiatry training. So you choose a particular specialty in which you specialize in and then you become a consultant in that. In our three years of co-training we have six rotations so each rotation lasts of six months. What's expected of us is to do minimum of two inpatient jobs so basically one year of inpatient you need to do it on any ward. Then you're expected to do I think a year of uh, community jobs. You need to have at least one job in old age and you need to have at least one job either in camps which is child and adolescent mental health service or in learning disability. So this is what is the requirement of any co-trainee when they are doing the co-specialty training in psychiatry. Also, along with these rotations, what's expected of you is to appear and clear your Royal College exam. So there are three parts to MRC Psych, so you need to have cleared that. And also you should have cleared all your ARCP parts. So you have one at the end of each year. And then there are various other requirements from GMC. So yeah, I'll probably make a whole video on that separately. So these are the basic bits and pieces that's expected of a co-psychiatry trainee. All right, so quickly, what are 
are the rotations I've done so far. I've done two inpatient jobs. So my first was a mixed inpatient and my second was an all male inpatient ward. So I've done two of those jobs. My thoughts before I started core training was exactly what I said a couple of minutes back. I was very anxious, very nervous, did not know much about it. I'm still learning as I go, but uh, I feel a lot more settled now. So all of these rotations that I mentioned, they are for six months and every six months you rotate. It's kind of a good and a bad thing because you know within six months you've kind of settled in the job you know the team so well the team is so used to you and before you know it then you have to rotate another job and start from scratch all over again in a way it's good because you're kind of pushed to work with different kinds of teams it really makes you grow as a person on the other hand you feel like oh my god it does have a lot of anxiety because you're so used to a particular team and how the whole system works in that team and then before you know it, you have to move to another team and learn a lot of things and relearn a lot of things. So yeah, it has pros and cons, but I kind of like it. At the end of any rotation, I do feel very sad and I'm like, oh my God, I have to again go and learn a whole new system all over again. Also at the same time, it kind of pushes you as a professional. And so I kind of try to look at the positive side of it. I think I would be very bored and I wouldn't find it very challenging if I was asked to stay in the same job for one year three years or whatever so i kind of like it moving every six months to a new team you know getting to know new people getting to know a whole different system all over again all right so that was a quick overview of how the core psychiatry trainee rotations work i'm going to talk about a few of my reflections and what i have learned now in my one year of working in an inpatient job i'm going to keep it all anonymous not disclose any patient identity or any patient information I'm just going to talk about my own experiences about how I felt and how I feel now looking back like to one year how I was feeling and how I feel now I just wanted to quickly say that this video is kind of inspired from Radhika so if you guys do not know Radhika is a pediatric trainee she's got her own YouTube channel I absolutely love her videos I absolutely love her Instagram content and I saw her make a video about her Pete's training you know reflecting back on her six months and I thought hey this is quite an amazing idea and I should to do one about my own training in psychiatry a lot of you guys were open to it and excited about it so here we go shout out to you Radhika again if you guys want to go check her channel out I'm going to put a link down below of her YouTube channel my first reflection is on history taking nobody really tells you but psychiatry history taking is completely different I had to learn a lot of the bits and pieces of psychiatry history taking I had to learn a lot of you know like the lingo and the questions you need to ask because these questions can be a little uncomfortable when you're asking a patient so you need to be very mindful of that there are particular phrases and words that people use that I noticed when I was you know watching them take history of patients so yeah so history is something which I was absolutely horrible at of taking you know psychiatry history bit and mental state examination and all of that now that I'm any perfect right now I'm still learning but I've come a long way from the history taking bit of psychiatry if you're somebody who's planning on taking psychiatry training then there's this book called breaking the ice you should definitely read it it kind of explains the whole nhs system and also has you know few important cases that you would encounter during your on calls things that are expected of a trainee so yeah reflecting back on my history taking come a long way still a long way to go sectioning I did not know what sectioning a person means because I did not work in a and &E when I came over here nor did I work in mental health services here prior to my co-training job so I had to learn a lot about it I had so much anxiety before I had to section 5 to a patient for the first time I remember I was the duty doctor and I was called in to you know assess this patient and probably be put on section 5 to so even if on a ward the entire team is there and you know the ward doctors are there it's still the duty doctor who has to come in and section the patient the consultant wasn't in that day so I had to go and section the patient and I was so nervous because you know even if you know what you're going to ask it was like the legal paperwork that I had to write down and I was like I really don't know what is to be filled in this properly the co-trainee on that ward and the registrar on the ward they were so lovely they're like don't worry we will you know take you step by step through this and they were very kind about it but yeah sectioning is something I was 
was completely unaware of before I started my job in psychiatry. All the sections that are there, how long do they last for, what are the reasons why someone's put on a section 2 or someone's on a section 3. So things like that. So that's something I was again unaware of. Alright, the third bit is reflecting upon dealing with agitated patients and sometimes, you know, a little pushy ward staff as well. I haven't had so many bad experiences with ward staff. I can probably only think of two in the last uh, one year, which is all right. I'm not going to discuss that. Talking about dealing with agitated patients, the thing with agitated patients or even if, you know, manic patients, they sometimes do say things that does get your heart. And when I started a year back, I could see a lot of things. I would feel really bad that, you know, like it, it would just strike the, I don't know, right or the wrong chords in me. And I would just take it to my heart and feel very bad that why did this person say this? But then I constantly kept reminding myself that this person is mentally unwell this person really doesn't know what they're saying it's such a difficult period that they are going through and i cannot be taking too hard so yeah that's something i have learned with experience and few people can get very agitated can get a little aggressive the primary thing in all this is to look after your own safety first before you can even you know look after someone else's safety look after your own safety first like, you know when you're assessing a patient you should be near the door the exit point of the room always have an alarm on you let the ward staff know that you're going into this room to assess this patient if you feel someone is you know sexually disinhibited or someone is very aggressive then make sure you have another member of staff with you you're not alone over there so things like that you do learn as you go always remember to not take things to your heart when someone says you know especially a mentally unwell patient if they say things to you do not take these things to your heart they do not know most of the times what they are saying and a lot of times when they recover when you know ask them that oh do you remember this incident had happened a lot of times they honestly do not even remember that these things that happened or they said these things or they did these things so yeah don't take it to your heart it's literally a proper multidisciplinary team that works towards a common goal of helping someone get better there are nurses there's a consultant there's HCAs there's OT then there's psychologists there are so many members of the staff who are involved towards helping one person get better absolutely never understood the meaning of that before I worked in psychiatry so I kind of absolutely love it I enjoy it working in an inpatient ward that I really 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 love was the whole MDT bit of it and you know in the morning whenever we used to have MDT meetings discussing all the patients what's happened overnight and coming up with a joint plan I kind of really love it I love working as a team I sometimes feel like think there are things I might miss out and someone can bring up and you know it's always nice to hear another person's perspective of the same incident so yeah I love it love working working in an MDTs. Communication bit. I think my communication has definitely improved since I've started working in psychiatry. The bit of, you know, talking with family or working, you know, managing the whole MDT, communicating with your consultant or your peers. I think my communication has definitely grown tenfold. I sometimes hear my colleagues speak and I am so much in awe. They always know the right thing to say at the right time. They have the right phrases. I wish I can be at the level that they are with the communication bit but whenever I feel that or think of that I always remind myself that I've come such a long way I am not from this country English is not my first language I always remind myself that hey listen you've come a long way don't be so hard on yourself but looking back my communication has definitely improved I speak with so much more confidence than I used to a year back you can probably watch my videos a year back and figure you know this bit out as well and you'll probably agree with me that my confidence has definitely grown with regards to communication skills supervision so one-on-one -on -one supervision every weekly one hour supervision with your consultant is something which is very unique and very special to the specialty psychiatry i wasn't aware of this so every week you have one hour slot which is kept aside where you sit down with your consultant and you have a one-on-one -on -one chat nobody else is in the room just you and your consultant you talk about you know any kind of cases that you want to discuss or any difficulty that you've been having you know any queries that you have on your mind any uh, interesting cases that you want to talk about you want any advice regarding anything I absolutely enjoyed my supervision time in my last rotation so my consultant was absolutely amazing I used to look forward to it every week this used to be something new I used to learn every week about the system about NHS about psychiatry you can get a lot of your work-based assessments signed up during that time my previous consultant was 
was very hands-on so he would make sure that I got a lot of those bits from my portfolio signed off so those are the bits and pieces that you can do in your supervision time it's your time so it's not like a lecture duration where you know your consultant is going to sit down and give you a lecture regarding something it's very trainee led so you're the one who's in charge in that room you're the one who can choose what you want to talk about what you want to discuss what you don't want to discuss so yeah absolutely love supervision time in psychiatry and that is something that I genuinely think is the most special and amazing bit of the specialty. I did volunteer as much as I could to take up more responsibility this year. There's something called PEEP. So basically, you know, medical students in medical school who are early on, like in their first year, they can have mentors who are basically doctors right now in psychiatry. And you know, you can explain to them how psychiatry works. You can probably have them shadowing you during your on calls to get to have a better insight of psychiatry. I took up that responsibility and then when they reached out that oh they need a CT1 representative for this program I was like I'm I'm ready to do it and then they were like oh you have to write an essay that why do you think you're the right person to be picked for this post so yeah then I got picked to be the CT1 representative for the PEEP program I realized that there are a lot of opportunities and I shouldn't be self-doubting myself because that's something I do a lot and I keep telling myself I'm not from here I'm not from here I don't know as much as the other trainee who's going to take up the job and you know, things like that so sometimes you just need to remind yourself hey listen you've come a long way nobody takes up responsibility or job knowing everything you learn as you go things like that I keep reminding myself I'm going to go to the next bit quickly which is similar to this one that you know in terms of taking up more responsibility there were so many opportunities for me to do so many things which I feel like I did not jump into because I was self-doubting a lot so my previous consultant he was very hands-on with a lot of academic things he used to like you know push me and my F2 to, to publish articles or you know take up writing case reports or do more audits or more QI projects and I used to keep self-doubting that oh I do not know how to do this oh I do not know how to do that and he really motivated me and pushed me to do you know like journal publication or to do articles I was like oh you know they're going to see through me basically the whole imposter syndrome thing but he really did push me and at the end of my rotation I and my F2 under his supervision we did end up submitting a very interesting case report fingers crossed it gets published to not know we'll let you know if that happens things like that I was very uncomfortable with which I shouldn't have been I kept self-doubting myself I mean I'm not from here I keep telling that to myself at times which I shouldn't be so yeah reflecting on it I wish I would have taken up all the opportunities that were laid out to me by my consultant you don't always come across such nice and generous encouraging people and when you do learn from my mistakes guys to take all the opportunities that are laid out to you especially when you've got a very encouraging supervisor or consultant like I did right so I've realized that I'm much more capable of a lot more things especially during the second peak in December in COVID when a lot of the staff members fell sick we were very short on staff we had COVID outbreaks on a lot of the wards in our trust and it was a very very difficult period honestly there were a lot of patients that were deteriorating and the general hospitals were full and it was just a very rough and difficult time for everybody we just need to be aware that we weren't taught about this in medical school we weren't trained how to deal with these circumstances or these situations everybody is dealing with it for the first time it was a very difficult period without having the kind of support which would have been necessary for me and the F2. We still managed to do well and we did look after our patients and with the limited resources that we had. Looking back on that time, I genuinely do not want to relive that ever again, nor do I want to sit here and brag about it. What it's made me realize is that if somebody would have told me that this is coming, I would have been like, oh my God, I can't deal with it. I'm not capable enough of doing it. But because I was thrown into that situation, that the outbreaks happened out of nowhere. Looking back on it, I'm so proud of myself for having dealt with it the way I did. Anyway, I don't want to get into it, but I realized that I'm much more capable than I think I am. The last bit are my limitations. So my limitations are something that I'm very, very much aware of more than I'm aware of my own strengths. My knowledge right now about psychiatry is literally pea size. I have so 
much more to learn, so much more to do. I've got the Royal College exams to clear. So yeah, I'm going to take you guys on this journey with me. So this was my whole reflection on my entire one year of working in an adult inpatient ward with the whole COVID in the mix. It's been very challenging, but it's also been a very steep learning curve. And I wouldn't want to change anything that's happened in the last one year with regards to my training or with regards to my professional life. Having said that, I am done with my adult inpatient rotations. I do not want to be doing any more inpatient now, at least for a while. I want to do a little bit of community jobs just to get, you know, a little bit of taste of how it is on the other side of the spectrum with mental health illness. I'm currently now in a camps rotation that has child and adolescent mental health services. It would have been a six month rotation, which would have started in February and would have ended in August. But because of COVID, all the trainees in London were asked to pause their rotation. So nobody rotated till March. So this rotation is only of five months now. Until and unless I started camps, I did not realize the effects of the lockdown and the pandemic on young person. I never ever thought of that aspect till I started my rotation. It's going to be a busy five months for me because schools have just reopened last week. I don't want to be talking more about camps because I've only been in the job for a week. So probably five months later, once I finish my camps rotation, I'm going to be reflecting back on how my five months were. And yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope you guys found it informative. This literally felt like therapy for me to sit down and reflect back on my one year. If you've enjoyed the video, then then do give it a big thumbs up and if you have any questions you want to ask about my psychiatry training then do drop the comments down below in the comment section and this is the end of the video and i hope you're looking after yourself and your loved ones and yeah see you in the next one bye